Hey, everybody. Welcome to Moves Moments. My name is Pete Evenson, a co-founder of Moves and your host today. Moves is an all-in-one solution for operators, whether you're just starting out or you're running a transportation business today and you want to take something to that next level, Moves provides the easiest software to delay your customers, drive more sales, and automate your day-to-day. -day. Now, enough with the intro. Without further ado, my man, I'm thrilled to announce my guest, Bobby West, CEO of Finest Transportation. Bobby, thanks for joining me. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. Thanks, Pete. I think this is going to be a, a good thing. So, yes. uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I've done these, you know, I've done these a couple times. And um, what's so interesting is that you and I, we met uh, in person recently. You've been a customer of, of Moves for quite some time, but we actually met in person recently at the CDNLA event in Orlando. And you actually told me that you watched one of my interviews with another Moves operator, just chatting about their story and whatnot. And that was one of the reasons why you ended up signing up for Moves, among probably other things. But I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. Well, right. I, it was, I was such a new owner and uh, yeah. I didn't really know all about the reservation systems. And I just did as much research as I can. And I came across you guys on uh, uh, on YouTube. Yeah. And I remember watching, I was like, wow, this sounds like, like a really cool like company. You know, it's like, uh, I like that it's the user friendly and everything else. I know you guys were touching on that stuff. Uh, and that's important for me because I'm not really that great at computers you know i just have to be uh, i should be behind a wheel not behind a computer okay? so, <laughs> right um, right <laughs> that's where i excel uh but that 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 video was actually what turned me on and then i re researched and looked into uh what moves is, is offering and i think i've pretty much used every bit of what moves can offer between yeah. the advertising and and the uh and the reservation system, which I I know I brought over a bunch of guys for you, and my customers absolutely love it. Yep. Well, good. I want to know more about you and and yourself and your company. I think what makes these types of videos so compelling, because the reason why I brought that up in the beginning is that let's let's think about the next operator that maybe is just starting out, or you know they've they've been around for maybe a year or two, or maybe they've been around for longer and they're trying to figure it out, right? And I think what's compelling is hearing from other operators and their stories and how they got in the business. So I think what would be helpful is maybe you can just shed some light on your company, how you got started and some more about your background. Yeah. Well, uh, my background is um, I'm a retired New York city police officer. I was a police officer there in Brooklyn for the highway patrol um, for 20 years uh, where we did all the motorcades and stuff and the big time escorts, VIPs and heads of States. Um, not only were we trained, you know, for months and months and months um, to know how to do those escorts, but also organizing. And I feel like that this business, sometimes I'm organizing some people's trip. I'm giving them a lot of experience and they love that. And I don't think I would be able to have that capability if I didn't go through, through that training. Um, so uh, I also moonlighted um, while I wasn't working for the NYPD. On days off, I would go work for NBC and Rockefeller Center and Saturday Night Live, The Tonight Show. So I, I did a lot of, um, I've done many, many, many celebrities. Uh, so I used all my training and, into that. And I just saw that I'm really good at it. Number one, I'm a great driver, Highway Patrol, I better be. But, yeah, yeah, have to be. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I just love doing it. I love the experience. I love meeting people you know especially celebrities with the fun but it's not just celebrities you know it's like i've done a lot of heads of states and you know it's a it's, it's been an honor and i came down here to charlotte uh and um i saw that there was no real service down here there were there are but they need more help so i said you know let me just go ahead and turn my experience where i can utilize that and build that here and I'm in business now for since August of 2022, and I'm probably going to be purchasing my seventh car tomorrow. Wow! So yeah, and you guys been with me the whole way. So good. So you so you retired, right? You were you were doing that for 20 20 or so years, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of the experience that you carry on today came from your experience. Um, now, 
what, so talk to me a little bit more in, in terms of that transition, right? And you're buying your first vehicle or, or your second vehicle, et cetera. And like, what are some of the things that are going on in your mind? What are some things that you're researching to try and figure out how do I start this business? Where do I begin? Yeah. How do you that process. Well, the whole thing was, was I said, let me get out there. Let me just try and do this. And I did Uber for about two weeks. Okay. Um, I met two customers that are still with me today. Um, and they're really the ones that, you know, set me off to start a business. They said, Bob, your personality is great. You're a great guy. You seem pretty intelligent uh, through our conversations. He says, I think you would make an amazing you know, business owner. And maybe even just doing this. And then I kind of told him about my my past, and all. he goes, "Well, if you don't do this, then you'll be foolish." And uh, it was it was nerve wracking first time, you know, getting into all this. It's a lot of work to get into your own business, but totally. you just kind of go through it and then be confident. Always be confident. Um, stick by your pricing, you know, because you, if you just drop pricing and things like that, you you're you're not doing yourself a favor and you're discrediting your, your service that you're providing. Uh, um, uh, like I tell people, you go to a five-star restaurant to get that great piece of steak, but they're going to be paying for that piece of steak. But sometimes in, in this, I see that they want the best, 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 but want to pay Uber prices or, or Whopper prices. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you have to be confident. The other thing that I really did learn, um, most um is know your numbers um i started off you know really fast getting the jobs um just selling the business just keep it moving keep it moving and there was a point where i wasn't really seeing a big turn of profit and i was wondering where all this money is going and i realized i did not know my numbers um finally i sat down it took a good week to figure everything out yeah. and then i saw that i was losing 14 dollars every time my mercedes would leave like out of my pocket. Wow. Um, but I definitely honed in on that. We had a big meeting um, and we just put everything together, figured out exactly how much it costs for my car to be sitting there in the driveway. How much is it costing me to be driving it um, and where it, we can. And ever since that, I've seen nothing but profit because now I know exactly what I need to, to sell the service at. Where yeah. before I was just, you know, Picking it out of the sky. Yeah, you're kind of just shooting darts, right? At a, at yeah. a like campus yeah. and just trying to figure it out. But I, I think part of that is you got to go through, you know, those types of tribulations to figure out, okay, let's go back to where am I at today and where do I need to be based on what I'm finding out? Right? Yeah. And uh, how much of this is, you know, you just being a risk taker and becoming an entrepreneur. And I think that's part of, I've, I've got a couple questions here, but I think the first one is, you know, how do I buy more vehicles? At what point do I buy more vehicles? How do I figure out as a business owner, when is a good time to buy more vehicles? So talk to me about your thought process, whether it's looking at the numbers, looking at demand to educate yourself on how do I add more vehicles to my fleet? Well, what I'm going to every time I purchase a vehicle, I always had that lump in my stomach and say, Oh God, please help. You know, just make sure that I'm making the right decision. Of course. Um, it was actually a cool story because limousines, I have two limousines now, two stretch limousines. And last time I saw a limo or drove a limo was like in the 90s, you know, because it, it moved on to going to SUVs and, and the sprinter bands and stuff. But it's like I turned the limos here back to be popular. So that was a really scary um, moment. And um, I, I went ahead and I put some money down on on the uh, on the limousine. And the night before I was going, I said, you know what? I, I think I'd rather just put my money maybe into the Sprinter mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna go. With that, I got up off my desk and I was walking out, my phone rang and it was a woman calling saying, hey, I was just wondering uh, do you have a limousine? I need to book it for 12 hours on Saturday. And that's why I have now limos because I <laughs> and picked up the limo and yeah. she's an awesome client. And uh, I told her the story that you're the one that made me go buy a limousine because I was so nervous. Yeah. What I learned from it is you have to be a risk taker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, 
is there cars that I've purchased and said, I shouldn't have done that. Believe it or not, people really don't care what kind of car it is, it's how they're getting there. Um, that's how I feel. Um, yeah. Of course, the car plays a big role in it, but it's more the service than the actual, you know, mm. the metal that we're riding in. Sure. Um, and I, I learned that a lot. I learned a lot about myself. Uh, that's that's very true. Um, and I feel like, you know, I, I had lost my, my dad uh, due to COVID. And I feel like he's here with me every single day, helping me make these decisions. And uh, But you just got to, just got to do it, you know, yeah. think big, don't think small. Yep. Yep. I love that. I, I, I think that that's great. And, and, you know, big shout out to your dad as well. And, yeah. you know, right. having that, you know, type of relationship, um, I'm sure taught you a lot about, you know, running a company and trying right. to, you know, trying to make it right. And I think that's a lot of operators, right. They're trying to figure it out and each stage in entrepreneurship, whether it's a transportation company or a software company, there's different levels that you're just trying to crack and and break through, and then you break through yeah. one level, and then there's another one and another one, right? And I think I, I sympathize with that. It's also part of the excitement of running your own company, but that comes with, you know, some risk that's correlated with that. Now, I'm I want to know more about, you know, the demand side and how you get business, and how you got business in the in the early part of your company, how you're getting business now. Maybe you can shed some light on new customers versus existing customers. Because I think that's some of the feedback that I get sometimes from new operators. It's like, where do I start to try and get business, right? And so I think if you could chat a little bit about that and shed some light on that, that would be great. Um, I have a unique, I, I, I always try and come up with creative ideas that people normally don't do. Yeah. So um, what I did once, um, when when I first started, it was basically Facebook, you know, and um, a lot of referrals from people that I drove for. And it, it's always been a constant, but, you know, there'll be like three days. I don't have anything. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and then I had to start getting into the paid stuff. And, yeah. Um, the clicks. It, it does. It does work. You know, you got to be patient. But like the uh, advertising and also the um, uh, the Google stuff that you guys provide, that's what really kickstarted. Um, but I also like other things. If I'm not doing anything, I don't like to drive anymore because I should be here and getting more business while the other drivers, <laughs> because yep. I don't want my driver seeing me driving a limo on a big job and he's on the, the schedule sitting at home. Yep. I would be pretty upset with the, with the business too. So all that has to go to, and you got to trust your drivers. Uh, but if the limo is not out and it's a Friday night, I'll jump in the limo and I'll go to a couple of the bars and just sit out front uh, or I'll go to some venue, just sit out front, have the stereo on the windows down, the underlighting turned on and people will come over and just say, Oh my God, can I see inside the car? Does that, I do that all the time. Love that. Uh, the good thing that I do is um, <laughs> I go to car shows and I, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, those guys put a lot of money into their cars, but I, you know, I'm winning car shows. <laughs> oh, that's great! My limousine. Yeah. So, I, I'm. I feel bad, but then what I do is I also give away at raffles, like free airport trip. Yeah. Nobody ever goes to the car shows, and they're like, "How'd you come up with that?" I go, "Well, I drive a car for a living. You run a show, and look at all the customer base here." Totally. Got a lot of business from just going to car shows on weekends. That's um, a new one for me. That's a yeah. new one. And I, and I love I that. was trying to think of something, you know, yeah. be creative, be creative. Yeah. Um, I also do a lot of stuff um, donating for kids. Um, okay. So I do that. And, and that goes a long way. Um, pick them up, take them to school. There was one girl who was our last day of, uh, of chemo. So we have here in Charlotte is the Concord Speedway. And they do all the Christmas lights at the, uh, the racetrack. And the mom really wanted to celebrate. It was the last day of chemo. And we went out, had a great night. But then she started getting tired, so she had to get home. So we got home, and I said to the mom uh, uh, and the little girl, I said, hey, you still got an hour left. And the mom says, I want you to donate that to um, you know, somebody else. In need. I said, no, this is, this is hers. This is what we're doing it for. I said, what's the day that she goes back to school? 
So I said, I'm going to be her school bus. Uh, and we picked up all her friends at the school bus area and then we brought it to school. But what I had is I had the police give us uh, an escort. I was able to work on that. And I also had the school all come outside front for when she showed when she arrived. I love doing stuff like that. Yeah. I also yeah. do a, a Tim Tebow, like the proms. Um, I'll donate the limos and it makes people just, it puts a smile on my face. It's, totally. It makes me feel, feel great. And and the man upstairs is always going to remember that. So and yeah. ever since I've been doing these things, for all you're of paying people, it forward. You know, you're paying it yeah. forward. I, I I think at times there's probably folks that have the hesitancy about donating, you know, part of my business, whether it be a vehicle or or you know my time for something. And it comes back that, tenfold. Yeah, and and will that pay? You know, pay off in the long run. Will I see a return on investment? And it sounds like. Not only do you feel great, you know, that you're doing something and you're truly giving back. I love that story. But two, it actually has turned into business for you. Would you agree with that? 100%. And I'm happy I did it and I'm going to continue doing it. And that for doing things like that, that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it to give back. You know, I love people. That's what I did for my entire life is just, you know, like protected and served. And now I want to continue doing that in another form of fashion and doing it this way um and they love it too so <laughs> so okay. um, i love the that. other thing that i meant to mention and we're kind of getting off the topic here but yeah. was the second thing that i learned in the first year um it's gonna sound funny but it's very true uh hire people when when you think that you need to hire somebody you're already too late mm. uh and also hire people that are smarter than you in the in that in the part that you're looking for help in um because uh you can you can kind of put everything come to a screech because you want it done your way but you have to be able to tr and trust people to to build your brand and help you help you get to that point because they'll be more loyal to that um so those are those are the two major things that that I definitely learned and also just just do it you know if you feel that you need another car I guarantee you're gonna fill it you know yeah. Add another air just for that, or or come up with something to do with just that car. Yep. Uh, I I learned that guy that um, uh, he actually has a a cigar car. He allows people to smoke cigars in the car. And that's his that's his model. He does it all the time. Yeah. Yep. Um, you just gotta think outside the box and just. I mean, you gotta think outside it. the box. You have to take risks. I talked to some operators that have been talking about getting another vehicle for you know years, and it's like they're just waiting until right. something happens. But you really just got to jump in and do it. So let's transition a little bit because I love the stories that you talk about. Um, whether you know maybe you have some sort of crazy story, an interesting story. This industry can be a crazy industry. You, you mentioned before that you, in your previous role you were working with celebrities and you know, high profile, probably senators and politicians, et cetera. Presidents, yeah. Right, exactly. And so maybe you could just give us a quick, quick story uh, about being in this industry that folks, you know, would resonate with, or maybe just find that this is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, well, I think every ride is different. You, you know what I mean? Um, it also has a lot to do with how you make it. Um, throw out little surprises, you, you know, and uh, for people because they are definitely looking and they're definitely watching uh and don't be afraid to like become friendly but yet still very professional you know yeah. we don't talk politics and stuff but you know uh, uh i always say listen you got to respect the chair that the president is sitting in and he's only sitting there for four years but that chair is there forever so we only have to deal with that person for the four years i think that he or she is there <laughs> so just hope that they can do the best for the country um and that's how i usually yeah got it <laughs> you know right. what i mean <laughs> but yeah every day is different stories in fact i had a story which is actually a pretty good um a happy you know it turned out to be a happy story um but i had a girl i'll, I'll try and make it the, the quickest i can because it was an all-day job uh we had to drive I, I get a phone call early in the morning and um she needed to get to charlotte airport right away um and you could just tell that she was like anxious, like she needed to get there really good. And I said, all right, not a problem. We'll, we'll be able to help you, even though we're three hours away, but we'll be there. 
She's like, okay, as long as you can get here by one o'clock, we really appreciate it. I go, what time is your flight? She goes, well, I don't have one yet. I'm going to get to the airport and then deal with it there. My background, my my, my spidey senses went off. Okay. Um, I knew there was something going on there. So I did the booking and everything else. I sent out my driver to to go to go get her. Uh, and then he just he got a text message saying, Hey, I need to cancel. My boyfriend's going to take me to the airport. So my driver was like, Well, what do I do? Should I just turn around? I said, That wasn't her text. Mm-hmm. Definitely was not her. She said, How do you know? I go, the spidey senses. It's just, I feel it in my gut. I said, I'll call you back. Keep heading there. So I give her a call. She's like, yeah, um, I'm not going to need it. I said, okay. She goes, but can the driver still come? Is he close? I go, yeah, he's pretty much like two miles away. Can you still have him come? Let me give him $20 for making the ride out. Now I'm really like, hmm. I said, okay. If you are like on da- in danger or if you're if, if you need something and you can't say it, because of the people who, that may be around you. If that's the case, just say, my flight so far is not delayed. Right away, she comes back. My flight so far is not uh, delayed. So now I know that there's an emergency situation. I had my driver continue going in. I told her, no problem. I'm going to take care of this right now. Got off the phone, got on the phone with the sheriff's office, found out who that was, and they got there at the same time my driver. And it turned out to be a big domestic where she was held in the house for quite some time um, and in a very abusive relationship. The parents, you know, finally they got her into a safe area. Everything was fine. uh, And they couldn't say anything else. They said, how did you know to do it? I said, well, because we're finest transportation. (laughs) Oh, that's great. That is so. I mean, I've got chills right now. Yeah, yeah. Just discussing that story and having those spidey senses. And look, your spidey senses are probably very different than you know many others, given your experience. But I think it all ties back to service. In your original point, right? And that you are driving a very nice piece of metal. But what makes it, what makes this industry succeed, is the level of service. Absolutely. Right? And yeah. I think that's a huge testament to finest transportation. Yeah. Get any more finer than that in terms uh, of you know, saving somebody's life. That's for, right. For the day. So I, it was a feel good moment. And yeah. I try to make as many moments as I can out of this. And my drivers, they have, um, uh, they have a whole bunch of their own stories. Uh, and you just got to make sure that you take care of those drivers. Because if you don't take care of them, you're not going to have any. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Um, That's a whole other topic that we could. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I also have those guys do uh, another great idea coming out of the box is I made up little business cards for them. They can put their name on it. and There's a QR code that goes right to a Google review. Love it. Um, and for every five that they mention the driver's name in the Google review, they get a bonus. Love so that. You know, I, I love incentivizing and coming up with games. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, using uh, some sort of like uh, gamification, right, to drive success. Big yep. belief. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, um, well, let's transition a little bit to, you know, shameless plugs, right? I, I brought you on here because I think, you know, we want to hear obviously about your business. And, and I want to talk about at the very end, you know, where people can find you and learn more about your business. Yeah, sure. Um, but maybe you could just shed some, uh, you know, more context on, you know, why you chose moves, how you found moves, and, and perhaps what, uh, what are some benefits that moves as you know added to your business incrementally? Well, uh, everything uh, I have to say. I have um, when I first saw your video, uh, when we first uh, when I first saw you and deciding to go with the reservation system, I knew moves was right because the second I would pick up a phone and make a phone call, I got somebody on the phone right away. Um, it was never pressure, sales pressure, nothing like that. In fact, I had like two meetings with them and it was nothing that, hey, you got to do it now. You got to do it now. Um, the customer service removes, well, you know, it's, it's it's excellent. You have the little question mark on the bottom, <laughs> you know, and you can ask a question right away within five minutes. I got my answer. And if not, they'll call me. 
Now, I don't know if it's because of Bob West and they know I have a lot of questions, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, everybody's been great. You, yeah. you know, um, I think most of your team, uh, they know who I am when I when I go into the NLA, you know, which, which is great. You feel like you're part of the team. Uh, another thing that I, I really love is that Amir, um, he, he would be asking me questions or doing this. Hey, what can you do? What do you think we should do? And I love that he's always asking operators, hey, what do you what, what would you what do you need that, that we're not being able to provide? And uh, you see some things and moves actually happen. That I'm like, wow, I was part of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, I helped that. Um, and a lot of it, and you guys are doing a great job at that. But the, for me, the biggest thing is the ease. Um, I did go to the other guy um, mm -hmm. for like a month. And <laughs> no, I never left you. I had to yeah. turn that off to do just so I can learn it. And it was just way too much. You need to have like a PhD. <laughs> yeah. Where this, this is, it, it, and the customer's like it. Yeah. So I fix something that's not broken. Yep. Uh, and I've just been very happy with with moves since day one, and uh, I see a long lasting relationship. And this is not a paid advertisement, right? No, I, I, not, not at all. Yeah. Uh, listen, we had a conversation, and you said I'd love to join you on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to really believe in what you sell. Sure. You know what I mean, uh, and you have to believe in what you're using. And this is exactly everything. Like and nobody's ever said something and it never came true or something, you know? Um, I just love it. Love moves. It's great. It. So good. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really, it's, it's, you know, one, it's hearing from customers and getting that validation is like the best part of my day. When someone comes to me and said, wow, this changed my life or, hey, my customer said this about my booking experience or the notifications on the driver app. And they just love making repeat business with me, right? Like that's, those are the things that ultimately, like obviously no news is good news in this business, but when you hear news and it's right, and it's, it's good, both yeah. ways, both constructive as well as positive, those are the things that really get me going at the end of the day. Well, I can tell you talking to other moves operators and people who are gonna be watching this, they'll, they'll agree with me. I guarantee 90% of their customers have said i love the notifications and i love that you, you you just don't stop the notifications when we're in the car even when we get dropped off most people would just drive away and be forgotten about yeah but when we click that done button they're also getting another thing and cust customer service is, is huge with me you know it's almost everything uh and they love it never heard anybody say you got to change it this way because we're doing exactly what you guys have built and it's working fantastic. That's awesome. Well, great to hear. Um, we'll end it with this, right? So just if you could give us a little bit of a plug, finest transportation, what sure. makes you guys stand out? And then if if I'm a customer or if I'm an affiliate, how do I find you? Sure. Well, it's finest transportation. I came up with the name because of the NYPD finest, right? So I, uh, I, I most of the time um, I employ a lot of retired and active law enforcement, first responders and vets, uh, and customers love that as well. Um, that kind of puts a little niche. You know, I got my own little niche by having just police officers, firemen, first responders, and as our drivers, uh, because they know that you're gonna be safe in, sure. in the car. Uh, so that that's my big niche. And then also my personality, you know, I'll talk to, I'll, I'll talk to a billionaire the same way I'm talking to my neighbor. You know what I mean? We all put our pants on one leg at a time. So, yep. <laughs> so uh, I'm in, we moved to Charlotte back six years ago and I've been you know, in this business for about a year and a couple months and I'm not doing anything looking back. I'm just looking ahead and I, I have goals and I hopefully this time next year I'll, be able to come back on here and maybe I'll be wearing a nice big gold chain or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's but, uh, great. Yeah. I mean, you've uh, got so much personality, yeah. right? I mean, that's one thing, right? Our conversation that we had recently at CDNLA, I mean, we could just chat for hours. I'm but always you're, yeah, you're like this, not only with me, but 
everybody, right? Yeah. Your, your your peers, your drivers, you know, folks that you're, you know, your customers. Um, yeah. And that's one of the joys that I have is hearing from people like you who have started their business and whether they've been running it for, you know, a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, there's so many learnings that we can get in these sessions. So I thank you, Bobby. You know, yeah. Really and I forgot my website. It's, it's yeah. MC, ncblackcard.com. ncblackcard.com. Uh, you can reach me at um, 704-322-4949. And I work very well with affiliates. Um, I'm trying to build that up at going to the NLA and, uh, conferences so yeah um i'm here to help everybody out i'm up to seven cars so i have what you need fantastic thank yeah. you bobby um if you're listening right give bobby a shout out uh learn about his business give him a ring and i'll put all of the you know resources and his website and his information on the youtube channel as well as when we send this out via email so Bobby, I Great. appreciate you, man. Thanks so much for yeah, the time. No, this was fun. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. So thanks, Pete. You got it. Talk to you yeah. soon. Go moves. Go moves. Thank you. <laughs>